I look, I like getting choked. There's a little Brad stall with um, this X-Files poster. It's, there's a lot going on there. And I think this is what it's like inside my head. It's got banana, no, these aren't bananas. That's a lemon, lemons. <laughs> Hi, hello. Mind the skin. I cut myself while shaving because I'm a fucking child, so we're not even gonna get into that. Here with some book updates. I was gonna say quick, but I, I want to give these books some time. But on the Kindle, we finished I Am Homeless If This Is Not My Home by the great Lori Moore. Uh, we know Lori Moore as a fantastic short story writer. I read her a bunch in undergrad in multiple classes. Love her work. She just characterizes people to the very human extent. All of her characters feel like real people with their charm and all of their little anxieties and they just feel very human, just like very much people I know in real life and even complete strangers, if that makes any sense. But yes, I, I love her work. And this one, this one was, this one was an oddball, but in like the most wonderful way possible. So I'm thinking of my Goodreads review. It's gonna be a one-liner because it really isn't something that can be talked about. You just, it's something that just has to be experienced. And I feel like it sort of starts in the middle of the book. And from then on, it's just such a wonderful joy of a ride. But it's essentially a ghost story. It's basically ghost if it was Waking Life, written by Nora Ephron, directed by Nancy Myers. <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. It's, it's such a fantastically odd book that meddles in ideas of death and the afterlife and what it all means. Lori Moore pokes fun at death in that it's this like great mysterious big thing, but it's also so full of depression and anxiety, but it can also be lighthearted. <laughs> Not to say death is lighthearted, but she makes it less daunting. She makes it less scary. And I don't know, I think like any death, any death that you encounter, it's just this weird, big, heavy thing. Lori Moore has great one-liners and there's a lot of humor exchanged between her characters and it just makes this like light, funny read while also still being quite thematically heavy. And it's a joy. Out by Knopf on June 20th. I'm gonna sit and think about it a bit more. Just like ruminations about death um, were quite compelling. So it's still something I'm, I'm thinking about. And I decided I have, there are a few days left of April and I wanted to squeeze in a little tiny. So we're doing Boulder by Eva Balthazar. And I just wanna know what the hype is. All y'all sexy people on the booktube have been reading this and I, I wanna know. I want to know what all the hoopla is, all right? Does this even need an introduction of some sort? I don't think so. But is it, but isn't this about a lesbian on a boat deciding um, to have a child or not and what marriage means, right? Is that what we're dealing with? I just started, I'm only, I just read two pages and so far I'm enjoying it. Um, love the prose so far. Also, I don't feel like people talk about this enough, but bookmarks, what do you use for bookmarks? Right now I'm using this dashi like note card from this shop in Brooklyn, I believe, in, in Greenpoint. And, but it's this little info card for this dashi store. And they have like different kinds of dashi from different like regions of Japan, which is so like particular, given that I've never seen anything like that. Such, such a great, great store in New York, but dashi okume. And I love this because as a bookmark, because I don't know if anyone else does this, but sometimes I don't know if like I've left up on the left side or the right side. So I like to put it 
like this. And I know I'm on this page because it's the storefront name on this. I'm not on this side, I'm on this side. Also, for people who just like use regular bookmarks, for example, the Sunny's bookmark here, if I put it in like this, I'm on this side. If it's upside down, I'm on this side. <laughs> Does anyone else do that? Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I sometimes don't know. And it's not like I don't mind rereading. It's just me. I'm just very particular and anal about stuff, so. Yes. Boulder, Eva Balthazar, can't wait to see what all the hoopla is. Yes, much hoopla. Excited to do that. Let me tell you, capitalism really popped off today. You like that? And where is it? Where is it? Here it is. The pen. Oh, these are going to be my new favorite work shirts. I love these so much. Ah! <laughs> okay. I'm fucking dork. Okay. Enough of that. Well, we're doing the rest of the video in this. Okay. 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 Next two packages. Very, very special. <sighs> okay. Getting, I'm getting myself ready. Here we go. Here we go. I already opened it because uh, there's nice light going on and I didn't want to lose light and I wanted to take pictures of this before I got to them. But the lovely Renee from So I Read This Book, we did a little cute book exchange and she sent me some books. Can I show you? Renee, I love you so much. My heart, all of it goes to you. But okay, let's open it. She wrapped this so beautifully in a little scarf. I love it. It's got banana, no, these aren't bananas. That's a lemon, lemons. Beautiful. Here they are, the books. There's a theme here, red, red spines. Okay, here we go. So she sent me Good Behavior by Molly Keen in this NYRB edition. Is it possible to kill with kindness? This dark comedy suggests not only can kindness be deadly, it just may be the best form of revenge. I love a good revenge story. I love that. Okay, great. This exquisite mariposa, Fiona Allison Duncan, she said that this was set in LA and I was like, great, beautiful, that's me. Fiona's journey to the real takes her to Koreatown, Los Angeles, where she sublets a room in La Mariposa. There, in the aftermath of a reality TV deal gone wrong, Fiona asks the question, can you rewrite your life? Interesting. Can you? Can you? Can we rewrite our lives? But yes, how fun. And I love this cover. If you look, there's a little Brad stall with um, this X-Files poster. It's, there's a lot going on there. And I think this is what it's like inside my head. Okay, next, she sent me this beautiful cover of Sport in a Pastime by James Salter. I love Salter. He just, you know, he's one of those guys at the bar drinking whiskey straight, and he knows how to deliver a sentence. He knows how to have a conversation. And there's just so much, so much passion and romance between his characters. But look at him. What a guy, what a guy. Love that this flap has this picture here. Love that. But yeah, I love this cover. It's it's fantastic. I've actually read um, A Sport and a Pastime before, but yeah, I read it when I was like really young though. So I wonder if it's much different if I read it now, but I love his prose. He's, he's a fantastic prose stylist and you read him for his sentences. A lot of hoopla over this one and I really want to read it. A Minor Chorus, a novel by Billy Ray Belcourt. Yes, in the stark expansive of Northern Alberta, a queer indigenous doctoral student steps away from his dissertation to write a novel informed by a series of poignant encounters. Appeared on Jalen's podcast. Uh, much has been talked, everyone. Everyone's been read, read this, essentially. And now it's my turn. Thank you, Renee. You're, I can't wait to gobble these up. Very, very excited. And I can't wait to put this somewhere. Love that. Okay. I got, I got a care package from home. I know, I know, I know. 
Okay, where shall we start? I want to start with why my mom wanted to send this book. She wanted to send me chips. She just loves sending me junk food and fattening me up for a big Thanksgiving dinner or something. But we got these ruffles, sea salted ruffles. Wait, way the original. Why does she want to send me this? Oh, here we go. This, I think this is the star of the show. She wanted to send me these wavy Funyuns Lay's. This collab, y'all. Like, why hasn't it happened sooner? Crazy. Can't wait to try this. Do we need a taste test now? I don't want to. I don't want oily fingers when I'm touching these things. And then she sent me honey barbecue, which we we all know what that tastes like. I also got. Not that I need more hats in my life, but push. Poche, yes. I got this little cute purple Poche cap. Based out of LA, the artist makes a lot of like clothing wear and accessories for ping pong <laughs> enthusiasts. There's like shirts, bags, caps, some of it upcycled and just like really cool stuff. And yeah, I love this purple cap. I, th I, I wanted like something fun and a bit of a flare. And uh, I like this purple with this like deep red. And I don't know if it shows up very well, but the characters below here are in like this light pink. And then there's just like this cute detail of their logo here and this like stitched logo there. Just fun. Just really cute, fun cap. Are we gonna do the rest of the video on this? We shall see. Okay more food items. I was in New York and I stayed at my friend's place and we got pizza and they, they brought this out and I, I've heard of it before but was like really skeptical about it. I was like do I really need that on my pizza? Put it on a pizza and I was like that hit. That hit. And that hit strong. Mike's hot honey. I'm just literally excited to put this on everything. <laughs> So yes, I, I got two bottles and I'm probably gonna run through them super fast. Cause that's how it is. That's how it is. The Paris Review came out with their, is it their monthly? And I was just like, that is so gorgeous. I need that, I need that. And I haven't picked like an anthology of some sort in a really long while. So I was like, why not? Why not? So while I got that, I, I got this, charcoal mock neck too as well i was like this is fun i had to get this i i've been in like a charcoal mood lately if you haven't noticed and i just wanted more charcoal in my palettes so i picked this up the paris review i'm gonna put it on now what we're doing right now yes love that i love me a good mock neck love love the neck i look i like getting choked it's the paris review I love that so much. That is truly an aesthetic object, perfect for any coffee table for fun reading. Yes, but we love the Paris Review. Always has the best interviews. Content is always on top, on top. Frisk by Dennis Cooper. I was just like, that is a, such a fun cover and I wanna read more Dennis Cooper because we, we love subversive literature. So I'm doing this. I don't know what's going on on the cover. There seems to be some kind of nude man submerged underwater. Possessed by the mystery of a series of fake snuff photographs, he was shown as a teenager, Dennis, the narrator of Frisk, lives in a world where their rules of attraction have become a treasure hunt, and love is only a matching of images and body parts. In Holland, in a room in a windmill above a brewery, Dennis is freed from the need to respect feelings. The unimaginable becomes an idea, and the idea a reality. Fun stuff. Love it. Love the sound of that. Frisk. Dennis Cooper. Super excited to read this. I can't believe I have this, but the way I begged for this, the emails I sent, so many, so many, like a disgusting amount. I was literally on hands and knees in email form. Y'all, y'all. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. We got it. We got it. 
We got the fucking ARC of Death Valley by Melissa Broder. Ah! I'm so excited. This is gonna be like its own special vlog. I don't know how, I don't know where, but Death Valley, Melissa Broder. I wanna read it. I wanna read it now. This is so crazy. I have this in my hands. <sighs> but yes, Death Valley, Melissa Broder. That cover is fucking stunning. Look at that. That's insane, isn't it? It's insane. I'm gonna be so sexy this spring, summer, just saying. And I hope you are too, because reading is sexy. That's what this is all about. All right, I think this is enough. Be well, do good work, keep in touch. <laughs>
friendly and helpful. Oh, well, there's B-roll footage. You, you know what I was grabbing. You know what I was grabbing. It's in this bag. Are we doing an unboxing right now? Probably not, because I actually have to do some work right now. So I'll, I'll relay the day while I do some work. The afterwards, I had brunch re reservations with our good friend Hajin. We love Hajin. She's on Goodreads. She's got her own YouTube channel. I'll leave it downstairs. She's great. Love her to death. And yeah, I had bottomless mimosas. You can imagine how that went. Yeah, we like were there for a good two hours. <laughs> and then we just ended up drinking more and eating more at this nice Mexican restaurant. Got myself a California burrito. Haven't had one of those in a long time. If anyone doesn't know, a California burrito has French fries in it. I know, wild. And it was good, it was good. And then I took the train back home. So I didn't do much, but it was a good time. Met some new people and they were very lovely. And yeah, through all that, I finished Boulder by Eva Balthazar. Y'all book two potties, you're right. You are so right. This is so good. But it's about a woman who works on a ship as a cook and meets this other woman. They'll have their sexy time and then decide to move to Iceland together. And then our good girl, Boulder, our protagonist, has some beef with a baby, incoming baby, or the idea of a baby. Beef with a baby. Love that. A lot of lust, a lot of desire, a lot of sex, a lot of, oof, just like earnest, first love. Portrait of a lady on fire. It's the butch dream for any lesbian who wanted their own version of Call Me By Your Name, but more so. The prose is just so delectable. And when you have it like jam packed in like a tight novel, novella like this, it's it's beautiful. It's beautifully done. It's wrought with so much earnesty, passion, and longing and like, you know what this is? It's like taking that first passion and not wanting to move away from that passion. Like why? Like you had it so good. Why ruin it with like a dog, a child? marriage. Reading Annie or No, Annie or No's passion, I've got to thinking. I really got to thinking, <sighs> like why? Why? Why do we put ourselves into these like, these major commitments? <sighs> I don't know. When some of us just want to be, some of us just want to be. As you can tell, I'm still a bit like tipsy. So we're trying to sober up here. Oh, but I'm gonna share a part cause I really love it. Only language can help you belong somewhere and make sure you don't lose your way. It's a nourishing underlayer that seems to live in the mind, migrate down to the mouth and spoken melt on the lips. At the same time, language is everywhere, occupying the body's furthest flung cells, pushing them to unimaginable places. It urges you on and turns your stomach, confuses your animal instincts, makes you human. No emotion is more indulgent than feeling that you are intensely human. You know, there's just some passions out there that just make you feel that like life is so worth it, like living is so worth it, and just like being. Just like, here I am in my meat suit and I am so content and happy in it. It's the same thing with like being, you know that moment where you like drink too much and then you're just like, holy shit, the world is actually really beautiful. <laughs> you step outside to take that drag, um, but not really, you just wanna be with your friends outside with the cool air after like being in the club and it's like way too hot and you just need that breath of fresh air. <sighs> and it's just that contentment, you know? That's full of this and, oh God. The translation is like so brilliant too. And it's just, it's just like raw honesty wrapped up in this tight little novel. And I get it, I get it y'all. I get why you made this into your top 10. I get why y'all be raving about it, but it, it's, it's delicious. If you haven't yet, Boulder, Eva Balthazar, pick it up. It is so delicious. I loved every, every minute of it. What am I reading now? And it, I want to like 
Uh, so I have like a pretty full shelf of books. We've got an ARC of The Death I Gave Him by M. X. Yu, which is a queer retelling of a Shakespeare play about being able to, it's like in a post-human world where we're able to like record our own thoughts. And so far it's really interesting, loving it. And yeah, I told myself I wanted to read more sci-fi. So here we are, here we are giving ourselves some sci-fi. It's fun, it's queer, and it's sci-fi. Like how, great, I'm in a good place. Um, I'm going to the city tomorrow to just like do some stuff. I'm bringing this along with me, but the agenda for tomorrow is sexy and pretentious. So we are bringing the Paris Review with us <laughs> tomorrow, issue 243. And Cat, lovely Cat on the tube, recommended I read the Mary Gateskill essay. So I'm gonna do that and just pick at this because I wanna be that person. I wanna be that person with the Paris Review at a cafe reading, because why not? I wanna be that sexy person. Go find yourself a sexy person, move to Iceland and have your moment. Have your moment. Be alive, be well, do good work, keep in touch and overall stay sexy. Good night and good luck. bathroom, um, simple black blazer, white t-shirt, 51% jeans, and uh, Mark Jacobs Heaven friendship necklace with both the bears, because I am my own best friend. Yes, that's the fit.
is the source of happiness. And buying things is also a source of happiness. Short-lived, short-lived, sure. But when it comes in book form, it's like, I'll take it all, I'll take it all.